Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now first of all, if you're new to the channel then welcome. That happens quite a lot. And second of all, if you've been here for a while, then you're probably aware of the little series we do called Can AMD's Ryzen APUs Run It? This is the little sub-series whereby we take a look at AMD's Ryzen 3 2200G and Ryzen 5 2400G to see if they can run some of the latest and greatest AAA releases. The reason we do this is because these APUs are proving themselves to be very popular choices and I want to sort of gauge some sort of lifespan on these uh, options, see how long they sort of last in the world of budget PC gaming and what sort of AAA titles they can and can't run as well as the settings that you'll need to use in order to get a smooth gameplay experience. Today it's the turn of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, one of the uh, best open world games since The Witcher 3 according to some reviewers. I've had a chance to play a couple of hours of the game myself and I have to say that it is absolutely fantastic and makes some great improvements over Origins. But let me stop myself right there because I'm no game reviewer, I simply test the hardware itself. So without further ado, let's get into it and see if AMD's APUs are capable of running this title. So let's start with the weaker of the two, the Ryzen 3 2200G. It features four cores, four threads and onboard Vega 8 graphics. Now the first thing I did throughout was run the in-game benchmark using an external recording method, i.e. the camera, to gauge an exact representation of what you can expect performance wise. After running through the benchmarks I then jumped into some on-screen recorded gameplay to give you a better idea of how this game performs in a real world situation instead of just by running the benchmark test. So we'll start off with the benchmarks here with the Ryzen 3 2200G and kick things off with 1080p resolution. Now bear in mind I had to use the low settings throughout to get the most playable experience today. So the only thing changing will be the resolution down from 1080p to 900p to 720p. At 1080p the game was pretty much unplayable. There wasn't really too much stutter to speak of but we did just have a generally low average frame rate that hovered around the low 20s but it's also important to remember that there will be a lot of on-screen action in some instances big battles with multiple NPCs on screen which will slow that frame rate down a little bit more so if you think you can perhaps get away with playing with roughly 20 to 25 FPS, bear in mind that you will experience slightly more slowdown in those busier built up areas, as well as during intense on screen fighting too. Turning things down a little to 900p again with the low settings, and we did see some sort of improvement creeping ever closer to that 30 FPS threshold that I like to achieve with these Ryzen APUs. As you can see in the top left, the Vega 8 um, was maxed out at 99% or 100% usage most of the time. And what you'll also see with the Ryzen 5 that we test later on is that the GPU, the onboard GPU, is definitely the limiting factor. Talking specifically of this APU though, and like I say, we did come quite close to that smooth 30 frames per second, although we didn't quite make it which is a little bit of a shame, but you might be able to get away with playing the game if you don't mind a few frames lower than 30. Just bear in mind, it probably won't be an ideal experience and there will be some stutter too. Now it was at 720p that we saw this magic number, 30 frames per second, again the Vega 8 onboard graphics maxing out at 99% usage, proving itself to be the limiting factor um, in this whole APU package, but we did hit 30 FPS during this on-screen benchmark here, which generally proves to be quite demanding considering the amount of action going on on-screen, though it won't be quite as intense as if there was a full-scale battle occurring, which can happen in this game too, so as I said before, bear that in mind. Let me just state now as well that all the drivers were up to date too. Now when it comes to actual gameplay, real world gameplay here, I did a little bit of running around for 5 or 10 minutes, sort of exploring the uh, town of Sammy on the first in-game island. I don't want to give too much away here, but I was sort of running about the hills, running about the town, and we did see a pretty consistent 30 frames per second most of the time. There will be a few drops here and there, but as you can see, the uh, CPU and GPU will be quite high in terms of usage, again, with the GPU proving to be the uh, main limiting factor here. I have to say, though, that I was pretty impressed uh, with the results here. I didn't expect 
the Ryzen 3 2200G to be able to stick to that pretty solid 30 frames per second when it came to actual real world gameplay. Considering how uh, the action on screen varied, in some instances you will even see closer to 40 frames per second. If there's not much going on on screen, you're climbing a big structure in the distance and there aren't a lot of NPCs walking around either. So all in all, the Ryzen 3 didn't really do too bad. Just know that if you've got one of these as part of your system, then you will have to turn the settings way down. But if you're itching to play AC Odyssey, then it should definitely be doable if you don't mind those aforementioned lower graphical settings. So we'll move on to the Ryzen 5 2400G, the uh, Ryzen 3 slightly bigger brother. And you may be surprised to see that there really isn't that much difference when it came to the in-game benchmark test. Again, we started at 1080p with the lowest settings using the Ryzen 5 and the onboard Vega 11 iGPU, and we averaged sort of between 20 and 25 frames per second once again. So I wouldn't really call this playable at this resolution. As you can see here, and as I mentioned before, the Vega 11 graphics are running at about 99 to 100% usage once again. All in all, it's probably not a very playable experience. As we bump things down to 900p, we see a similar result once again to the Ryzen 3 2200G, but that doesn't mean that we see similar results throughout. Just because the benchmarks are the same when we get onto the real world gameplay a little later on, you will see a slight increase in performance, but let's continue with the benchmark tests for now, and here, 900p, 26 frames per second was the average. I did do five benchmark runs with each setting though, just to be certain of the results I was seeing. And they all proved to be very, very similar, if not identical. 720p though was where we saw the biggest change. We saw an extra two frames per second over the Ryzen 3 2200G with the Ryzen 5 here averaging 32 frames per second. Once again, the experience felt a little bit smoother and this benchmark test proved to be a lot more successful with the Ryzen 5 2400G in terms of eliminating some of the micro stutter that I saw beforehand. Although it's not an ideal result, it is slightly better overall when it came to the benchmark tests than the baby Ryzen 3. But now, once again, let's get into an actual gameplay test to see how it differs when compared to the 2200. Now, I won't lie, you may have noticed some severe stutter during the Ryzen 5 benchmarks at 910p. While I can't explain this, I can say that when it came to the 720p tests, most of those issues were gone, and I was worried that these performance problems would carry across to real-world gameplay, though I am happy to report they did not. The stuttering was almost completely eliminated, save for a few areas, though it was brief and hardly game-breaking. Just like with the 2200G, I did a bit of town exploring, hill climbing, and got myself into a bit of trouble with the local guards, yet the frame rate remained steady for most of this. Please remember that the map is so big and the environment so diverse that performance may significantly differ depending on where you are and what you're doing, and as the story progresses and you find yourself part of bigger and better battles that litter the screen with NPCs, the frame rate might drop significantly. That being said, when we compare the gameplay results to that of the Ryzen 3 2200G, we did see around 7 to 8 frames more on average overall, despite the benchmark runs being so similar, yet the onboard GPU in both situations did hold us back. There's also the fact that this game, just like its predecessor, is quite CPU intensive, and the more cores you can offer it, the better. Six or more cores seem to work best with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but with quad cores still being the most popular option, and these Ryzen APUs still being a fantastic choice for budget gamers, I'd have to say the four extra threads of the Ryzen 5 probably does help out, and you're in for a more consistent experience here if you have this APU. That being said, the Ryzen 3 2200G can still handle it, and in both instances I wouldn't recommend turning things up beyond this resolution and these settings. Overall, it's a determined effort from both these entry level options. Don't forget, pairing a discrete GPU like a 1050 Ti for example with either of these would also prove a lovely match, and should guarantee you much better gameplay. 
As for this video and as for this test, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see you all again in the next video.